So a pretty big boast to be able to do a DX with a 1 watt AM transmitter on 29.1 megahertz. But uh, we're going to need an antenna. Uh, first I thought of the old fashioned ground plane antenna. This is really just made out of oh three or four, five pieces of uh, quarter wave wire and you suspend it in the air and feed it with coax and it's a, it's a wonderful low angle radiating antenna on 10 meters. I've also built uh, 5 eighths waves. Those are great antennas on 10. You just pull this long wire up, 5 eighths long, you do some matching at the base, put out three or four radials. Very nice uh, DX antenna. And of course a high dipole, hard to beat. Some would say a high dipole is probably the way to go. And then uh, I've been looking at uh, vertical loop antennas. A vertical loop antenna uh, will be a lot of fun. Um, they tend to match around 90 or 100 ohms. Um, if you make them rectangular, you can get a 50 ohm match. might be cool to try something like that. But uh, let's get an antenna up for 10 meters. So some of you are going to say, not another antenna video. Mike, we all have antennas. We don't need to know how to make any more antennas. But there's been a, a blessed event that's occurred over the last few months, and uh, we call them sunspots. And that means that some of the bands and the higher frequencies are starting to wake up. So this is very exciting, and we'd like to uh, have an antenna to be able to leverage those higher bands like 20, 15, 10 meters. So we're starting to see the sky wave skip coming in from far away places. So uh, one of the more popular antennas um, for the higher frequencies and I think the most effective for, for uh, someone that doesn't have a lot of height, maybe has a small garden, whatever, um, is the cubicle quad antenna. It's simply unbeatable um, but unfortunately, it's fairly fragile and fairly complex to build. And uh, th maybe people are looking for something a little uh, simpler. Of course, the vertical in the backyard is going to give you good DX, good low angle radiation for the higher frequencies. But uh, I'd like to try uh, to put up a vertical loop. A vertical loop, just a square loop. It only requires two uh, mount points couple of trees, you pull it up off the ground, feed the bottom, and you have essentially uh, two horizontal, uh, horizontally polarized uh, elements that are phased together. You guys are going to love this. I brought the 630 meter antenna down to the ground for the season, and I have two nice high ropes going way up. That's what's going to support that rectangle, and I think it's going to get it right up there Pretty good location going pretty much east-west. I think it'll work out fine. Okay, so you guys would make me do a rectangular loop to match to 50 ohms. So I did a little bit of work and uh, we're using MMANA-GAL. Now this has been pronounced many different ways. Mamanagal, Mamagal, Mgal, M squared, Anna, you know, there's lots of different ways that people uh, describe this wonderful antenna modeling program. So, since you picked a loop antenna, I being lazy, I'm trying to go for a 50 ohm match. And that means that the loop is, it's a rectangular form rather than a square. And you say, well, that's not good. We're losing all of that radiation off the shortened horizontal elements. Actually not. Most of the energy, as you can see, is concentrated right in the middle. So by losing a little bit on the ends, we're not losing that much radiation. And the bonus is we get to match pretty close to 50 ohms. So let's look at that. After optimization on the element, we're getting an almost perfect SWR with a 50 ohm uh, you know, with a 50 ohm setup. Now, if we set this for 112 ohms, you'd find that the square structure would match better. 
but no, we went for 50 ohms because we're using 50 ohm coax. Uh, the far field plots are okay. Um, it's not tremendous, uh, you know, when you're talking about uh, horizontal, which we're interested in. You know, we're looking at this thing and we're saying, well, is this a low enough angle of radiation? We're not really that concerned about a low angle of radiation. We're just trying to get some energy out so our little one watt transmitter can be heard by just about anybody. I like this pattern because it gives you a fairly low angle uh, lobe with a lot of gain and it gives you a fairly high angle lobe uh, with medium gain. So we're going to live with this. So this is really not bad. At 29 megahertz we are getting a 1.04 SWR. So it's, it's, you know, at least in theory it's perfectly matched at the 10 meter height. Um, we're using the ground setup that's just normal a forest type ground. Um, and I imagine we'll have to do a little bit of trimming, but this is going to get us in the ballpark for the AM portion of the 10 meter band. I like what I see. We've got nice current points. This point here will be pretty far above ground and this point here is going to be up at the 75 foot level so no trouble at all getting a good pattern out of this antenna. So I've run it a couple more times just to make sure everything's okay. We like the far field plot. Um, I think that uh, we should look at the dimensions next. If we look at the, uh, the element edit this is going to give us the uh, the perimeter 10.94 meters. Hey, it is a 10 meter antenna, so I believe that. Um, you know, that's roughly 36 feet perimeter. Uh, the height uh, 3.64, that's about 12 feet in height, and 1.8, that's about 6 feet. So 6 feet wide. It's a 10 meter antenna that's only 6 feet wide absolutely amazing. This is going to be an interesting looking rectangle that we're going to suspend as far up as we can get it and uh, straight 50 ohm coax match. Let's see if this works. So look how small this is. It's just amazing. I'm holding the whole thing in my hands. Look at that, the entire thing. really not much to it. So I think that antenna is up there. Let me tell you, we are talking way up. And I might actually have to raise my numbers on the model. Now I have not put a ballon up there yet, a one-to-one -one ballon, or any uh, choking beads or anything like that. But as John Krauss said to some of his uh, graduate students, John Krauss, the great antenna engineer from Ohio State. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have an erection. That is way up there. Fantastic having four guy wires coming off that antenna allows me to get it right in the shape I wanted. You can do this, of course, with uh, down, down leads going to stakes or support leads going to stakes, but uh, having them up there already for that 630 meter antenna, that's fantastic. So in order to test our antenna, at least for match, I'm using the venerable Keith Kit Marauder in CW mode on 10 meters. And I have the frequency set for uh, 28.5? Yes, no, that's right, 28.5 megahertz. So, I know the, uh, the loop is receiving. I put it on the receiver, and we'll go over there. Let's take a look at the, uh, the SWR. Come over here to the meter. Let's see what we got here. Everybody see the meter? Okay. About 70 watts. And the reflection's just, just coming off the peg. About 1.1, maybe? It is matched. There is no doubt in the world that this loop is matched. It's following the model almost perfectly, but remember, um, I've got five ferrite beads at the junction, and uh, 
I have to think that helps a little bit. But this is uh, one of those cases where the length of the coax also helps your SWR and it, it brings it down. The loss of the coax, remember, gets factored in to your SWR reading. So that the actual SWR might be as bad as 1.4 to 1 or 1.5 to 1, but because of the long coax, it brings it down to almost a perfect match. Okay, we're down at 28 megahertz. About 1.8 to 1. That's not bad. Let's go up to the top of the band and see what it looks like. Let's try 29 dot... Oh, 29.2. We're not going to go any further than that for what we're doing. Not bad. About 1.6 to 1. So it's a touch low, but it's going to be absolutely flat down at 29, and uh, I think we're going to be in good shape. But uh, it's going to work throughout pretty much the whole 10 meter band, and uh, it looks like it's centered around 28.6, 28.7. It's completely flat at 28.5, 28.4, and start to creep up around 29.1. So. It needs to be shortened up just a little bit for the AM band, but you know what? Good enough. This is the loop. And this is the 40 meter dipole. That's a 40 meter dipole. There is some QSB. Back to the loop. No doubt the loop is working pretty good. It's well tuned and it seems to be picking up stations nicely. I think we've got a good antenna. This is the dipole antenna. Back to the loop. There is some QSB. The loop. So it comes up on both of them with the QSB. But the loop is consistently stronger. This is the loop. This is the dipole. Back to the loop. Wow, that rectangle's nuts. It it perfectly met what we did with the model. The SWR is excellent. The tuning in the portion of the band we were designed for, we were just off a little bit, just a little bit low. Of course, you guys that are doing single sideband will like that because uh, it really puts it right in the middle of the action for the, uh, the single sideband uh, portion of 10 meters. Anyway, we've got an antenna up. Let's get this transmitter finished.